Hi, I'd like to continue with our table view example. And, uh, you know, right now we've got our table view kind of working. Um, it displays a list of movies. We'll make it display more movies in the future. And right now we've got these three movies. If I click on one, I see some details about it and I can go back, right? And what I'd like to do in this video is create a custom table view cell here. So this will be all about custom table view cells. Okay, so what I'd like to do is replace the boring, you know, classic, you know, normal table view cell with one that I create, okay? So how do we begin? Well, I'm going to go to Storyboard. And in Storyboard, I have um, my table view here. And then this is the table view cell that I have. And if I look at the property inspector here you can see that the style here is set to custom i really you know really what i have here is a basic cell um but what i'd like to do is set this to custom right make sure that one's custom and then you'll notice you can change the height of the cell it's hard to tell because it just has the one handle here but actually the cell goes from right, like right here to just under this label they just kind of put a label above it to say prototype cells but um, but our, our cell is about from here to here. I know it's kind of funny. There isn't a line there. But anyway, there's our cell. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Um, right. And uh, I'll change the size. I don't know, maybe 94 pixels. Sounds pretty good. Right. And then what I want to do is add some other UI elements in here. So maybe I'll put a label in there like this. And I kind of like the text kind of bigger. Oops, wait, that's the number of lines. I actually want to make the text bigger like this. I'm going to hit Command Equal to resize the label after I've changed the font size. So maybe let's make that 27 points. And then I'll drag this over like this. And then I'll make another label and I'll drag it underneath. And uh, kind of snap it down here and maybe drag it over so it's the same length as the top one, right? Okay, so now that we've created the label, we need to do a few more things to get this label to work correctly. So since the screen can resize these elements, or actually I should say the computer's going to resize them for different screen sizes, you know, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, uh, iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 5, you know, they all have different screen sizes. So, so we'll need to add some constraints, okay? So... If we click on the top label, what I want to do is create a, a constraint between the, the top edge of the label and the top of the cell, and then a constraint on the left edge to the left edge of the cell, okay? Maybe I'll move this in just a little bit like that. Yeah, I like having a little bit of space there, right? So we'll have a constraint up here, the top edges and the left edges. And then now we'll need a little bit of a constraint on this side to hold it in place. And that should be enough to position the label. Okay, so essentially for the constraints is we need enough constraints to allow the computer to compute the, the vertical position, the horizontal position, the width, and the height. Okay? And then the same for the bottom. The bottom, though, what we'll do is we'll add a constraint to the bottom edge, a constraint to the left edge, and then a constraint between the two of these, so from the top edge of this to the bottom edge of the other label, okay? So let's do it. We'll do it one at a time here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll click on our label here and go to the pin menu, and I'll pin the left and the, and the top edges, okay? And then that'll be good. And then it'll give me this orange thing saying like, hey, you know, you don't quite have enough constraints to, to satisfy this, right? So what we'll do is we'll go over here. I should go back and I'll add another constraint to the right edge. Okay. Oh, now that looks pretty good. There's no more orange there, right? And essentially with the constraint on the left and the right, I can determine the horizontal position and the width. And with the constraint along the top, I can set the vertical position, and then the label will set its own height, okay? And part of that is because I, I did the command equal, so I didn't resize it. If I resize the height of the label, then it, I'll need to include a height, okay? So let's do it on the bottom label here. Let me click on that. I make sure the label is selected here, right? Not the background or the cell or something, right? So make sure you got your label selected. And then what I'll do is I'll go here, and I'll um, add a constraint to the left side, and the bottom, the right 
and the top. So when I do this one, I think it will it will automatically see that the lab this other label is up here and, and do a constraint to that label, right? Yeah, there we go, right? So you can see that this one kind of connects the two labels, and then this one is on the left edge there, and this on the right, and this is the bottom, okay? So that's pretty good. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a custom class for this cell, okay? So I'm going to go to File, New File, and create a new file, iOS Cocoa Touch class. And what I want to do is I want to create a UI table view cell. Okay, so a subclass of UI table view cell. And I'll just call this custom cell. How about that, right? You can name it anything you want. So if you have a specific use for your cell, like I could have called it movie cell. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that's a better name. Movie cell, right? That'll be specific to what we're doing. And then I'll click next. And I'll save this into my project folder. And what we need to do is go back to storyboard and we'll click on the table view cell. So make sure that you've clicked on cell here in the outline. You can click on it here if you want, but sometimes when you click there, you, you actually get an in, inner element, right? We wanna make sure that the cell is selected, okay? So get your table view cell, and it should say table view cell right here, okay? And then we'll go to the identity inspector, the little newspaper, and where it says class, we'll type in movie cell. Okay, and then hit return, right, just to make sure it takes it, right? And there we go, right? So now we've got a class to run this. So think of the cell as like a tiny view controller, right? So it's remember when we create a view controller, we need to give it a class, and that class kind of manages the view controller, and you create links to, um, to uh, you know, IB outlets and IB actions that you've created. Well, that's the same thing that's happening here, right? So we've got a new table view cell, and then it's got two um, UI labels in it, and we'd like to create outlets for these that will live in the um, the movie table view cell class, okay? So let's do that. Let's add those. So um, with this view here, I'm going to option click on my movie table view cell, and that should open it in the assistant editor here. Right, it's a little hard to read that, but uh, let's close this for the moment. And then you can see there's movie table view cell and it's class. Make that a little bit bigger there. Yeah, it's class UI table view cell. Right, and we won't need very much of this. I'm just, I don't have a lot of screen real estate there, but uh, that's okay. I think we'll get by. So we've got this, right? And then you can see here's class, movie table view cell, curly bracket. And then here's the first function here, awake from nib. And then there's another one, set selected, right? Let's add a little space here, okay? And what we'd like to do is create an outlet for both of these labels. So I'll do it from the outline view. It'll be easier. So I'll hold the control key and click on the first label and drag in here. And then this will be the title label. So I'll call it title label. And then, you know, when I hover over it, you can see the bigger label is selected, right? And then let's go to the smaller label here and do the same thing. So I'll control drag from here below the other one, and I'll call it, how about um, year label? And I'll put the movie year in there when we, when we display it, okay? So it'll say the title of the movie, and then it'll say the year of the movie, okay? And then I hover over, and you can see that that one turns blue, so I know that these are connected, right? Okay, so let's uh, switch out of the assistant editor. Let's go back to, um, to our view controller now. And we're going to have to make a couple small changes here. Okay, so back in view controller, we've got, um, we've got this table view cell for row at index path, okay? So this one, it returns a UI table view cell, right? So if we option click on cell, you can see it says UI table view cell, but our cell is now a movie table view cell, which is different. So what I'm going to do is right here at the end of DQ reusable cell with identifier, we're going to say as a movie 
table view cell. Okay, so I'll just put that on the end here. So it's re DQ reusable cell with identifier. There's our cell name, and then I'll say as movie table view cell. Okay, so now we're gonna have to change this because movie table view cell doesn't have a text label, right? Instead, movie table view cell has, let's just get rid of that and do dot um, title, I should have a title label. I don't know why, maybe the, the um, editor, the Xcode just hasn't quite recognized that yet. Let's actually, let's go back to our table view cell and save it just to make sure that it recognizes it right. And we'll go back again. Oh yeah, there it goes. Now it turned, it turned uh, kind of blue so we know that that's recognized, right? Maybe we should get the year now and put it in the year table view cell. So we'll say cell dot year label. Oh, there it shows up, right? Text, right? Because every label has a text property. And then we'll set it equal to array bracket index path dot row. And then this returns a movie object which has a director name and a year and then we can put the year in there now remember year is an int so we'll have to convert it to a string so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do it with the quotation marks like this and then we'll put the slash and the parentheses there and then that will you know convert this um this integer into a string, and then we can put that in the text, right? Let's give it a test, right? So I'll hit the run button here and see what the custom cell looks like. Oh, there we go, right? So there's uh, 2001, 1968, Logan's Run, 1976. This is Spinal Tap, 1984. Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll continue with this and do a little more with this custom cell thing later, okay? So uh, thanks for watching.